minimum requirement place, solitary essentially for six months because he can't be with other people. And he said to my friend um, just the other day, who I, I was talking to him, and he said, this guy said, I'm misunderstood. Now, you might look at him and think, oh, you can't judge, and it's true. But if you met him in a dark alley, when you're by yourself and he came down and you noticed 666 on his um, forehead or on his, on his face, what would you think? You see, we, we can't help but judge like that and people will judge us too based on what we're doing and what we're saying. But you know, we, we, I want God to give my life meaning in such a way that um, people can see God in me. Because you see, God gives us meaning. We can talk loudly and be not even heard or misheard. So are we prepared for God to give us meaning? I'll just finish on these two scriptures. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts and see if there be any hurtful way in me and lead me in the everlasting way. You know what that everlasting way is? Life, light, and increase. It's just a simple illustration of, of, of what it's like as opposed to death, darkness and decrease. You see, our anxious thoughts, those things that are destroying how we think, what's destroying our life. And then Jeremiah 17, 10, I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind even to give to each man according to his ways, according to the results of his deed. You see, we look at people and make a judgment about them based on their appearance. And it's just a human nature thing. But God looks at our hearts he looks at the hearts of people. And when we're speaking to people, we can ask, Lord, show me, help me to see and understand and to know how do I speak to this person? What can I say to them? Can I help them in some way? Is there something you want to say to them? Because God knows the innermost parts of us, our motivation, our heart, attitude, our agendas and things. And God can reveal all of those things. God penetrates all our walls and barriers. He comes into a heavily guarded compound that is our hearts to see you and me for who we really are. What are. Anyone he can see and knows. He knows our motives and our schemes. Nothing is hidden from him. Are we willing to be transformed by the renewing of our minds and the power of God through the Holy Spirit so that we live his way? You see, this is the challenge of being a Christian in today's society, in our culture, in the season that we're in. You know, because when the heat comes on, we're going to need the fruit of backbone. Because if we can't stand up for Jesus Christ for the time, at the time, and, and you can see it coming with hate speech and other bits and pieces that are pretty much a lot of the stuff is just aimed at uh, Christians and conservatives who are, you know, Christians are seen as conservatives. Do we want to be motivated by the meaning we get from God? That humble surrender to Jesus in every area of our lives, knowing that nothing is hidden from him. And as I said, I found, I found God spoken to me this week and said, if I take, you watch what happens when I take my meaning, my presence away from you. Suddenly things that you took pleasure in, they don't mean anything anymore. Because Jesus gives you life. And then when he comes back into your life, peace returns and then suddenly you enjoy the simple things again that God has given us as a blessing. But when we don't, not with him, we can't see them. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you um, for today. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this message. Because, Lord, I really believe that in Jesus' name, we need to, we need to learn um, or be prepared to stand up and be counted as Christians, as followers of Jesus Christ. We need to choose to have some backbone and stand up and say, Lord, you give my life meaning. You give me purpose. I don't want to be like that salt that can lose its taste and we're told to, to taste and see that the Lord is good, that we're the salt of the earth and, and I don't want to lose my taste so that, so that people all, they, they, it's too salty. I don't want to be too salty because it's a bitter. And I don't want to be not enough salt because it's bland. But Father, I pray, Lord, this morning that you would help us all, Lord, to choose to live a life that is for you. Because you give us meaning. Without you, there is no meaning. And so, Father, this morning, we commit ourselves to you. We humble ourselves before you. We submit to you. And I pray right now that any fear, any anxiety or depression 
about whatever it is that's going on in your life or what's happening around you. I pray that it would go right now in Jesus' name as the peace of God floods your life. Submit, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. You can resist him, but unless you've submitted to him first, submitted to God first, I mean, um, you know, the, the devil, we need to be submitted to God and come under his authority. So, Father, I pray that we would all be transformed by the renewing of our mind. It's an ongoing process. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, well, bless you this morning. Um, there's some coffee, I think it's the morning tea, and it's the same deal as last week where um, you'll all get a plate <laughs> if you want one, um, and um, we'll make some coffee, and, and, and there'll be some drink there as well. And um, if you'd like us to, uh, if you want to talk to us or pray, we'll pray for you, then um, we're available for that. So bless you.